Morning, I'm Ollie Pyle, I'm a landscape painter and today I just want to tell you a little bit about watercolour washes, what they are and how we do them. It's very very simple really, it's just a term for how we apply the paint to the paper. And I'm going to show you three main types of washes and then two different techniques for applying paint to the paper. So stay tuned and let's have a look at them. So I've divided my pad up into five different areas here and I'm going to show you three different washes and I consider these to be the three main washes that I use and most watercolorists use to be honest. First of all a flat wash, second a graded wash and third a variegated wash and then I'm going to show you two different ways of applying those and when I'm talking about a wash all I mean really is how we apply watercolour to the paper and that can be a big area like um, the sky or field or a, a hill something like that or a small area like the side of a boat or a cottage roof doesn't really matter how big it is when you're applying watercolour to the paper you're making a wash so for the flat wash I've mixed up uh, quite a nice big pool of ultramarine blue here and all I'm going to try and do is cover this area here in a flat colour. Make sure you lose plenty of paint here because you want it to be running down the paper. See this, see this bead that's collecting here? It's perfect. You need that and you need to paint into it and bring the paint down the paper. It may look as if it's running out of control, but it's not. That's fine. You need to have this amount of paint to get a nice flat finish. Make sure you've mixed up plenty of paint before you do it and you should be fine. Now this might look a little bit boring and you might think well, I'd rather be painting you know, a nice landscape or seascape or something. Well yeah for sure but unless you can master how to make a lovely flat wash like this you'll struggle when you go to make a bigger painting because this technique of painting a flat wash going from the top of the paper to the bottom and getting a nice smooth finish is absolutely critical to developing your skills in watercolour and being able to paint and make it look nice and transparent. Next up a graded wash again really important technique to have because this you'll find crops up all the time in the watercolours that you're doing and when I say it's graded what I mean is we're going to start dark and end up light. You could go the other way around of course but I'm starting at the top with dark paint and let's do let's do two couple two or three runs across and then to lighten the mix I'll add in a little bit more water mix it up and continue coming down the page. More water still. You can see how wet and juicy that is. That's really important. Again, more water. I keep, I keep adding it to lighten this wash as I come down towards the bottom of the paper. And you'll see when this dries up, we'll have a lovely graduation from dark to light. Variegated wash. I'm going to start with blue. We will add red so it will transition through a sort of pinky purple colour into more of a red as we work down the paper. Let's have a look at that. I'm going to start off with a bit more blue I think. There we are. Again just a couple of strokes across. And add in a little bit of red, not too much. You don't want to don't want to go crazy here. This is a smooth transition. A little more red. And as you can see, it's slowly moving into a purpley, lovely purpley colour actually. It's cadmium red I'm mixing in. A little bit more. And the key is a little bit at a time don't go too wild with this otherwise you'll end up at red far quicker than you envisaged 
got them on red and as you can see we're we're now moving well away from blue towards the red end of the scale i'm just going to add a little bit more water because because i'm adding more pigment all the time it's getting tonally darker so i'll add a little bit more more water just to uh, keep it a little bit more even And there we are, we've arrived at a nice pinky red at the bottom. Flat wash, graded wash, variegated wash. Learning how to do these three is really, really important. Have a go at it and, and, and do it a number of times until you feel quite confident in how you're applying the paint and achieving results like this. Now, I said there were two separate ways that you can apply paint to the paper and I mean there's there's probably others but but as I paint I either paint wet onto dry which is what I've done here or wet onto wet let me show you the difference between the two if I'm painting wet onto dry it's it's really quite simple the paper's dry I'm going to paint a wash onto it and I can paint down the paper as I did in, in all these examples here. I can break the wash up if I want to with different brush strokes. And you can see how the paint's behaving. Like this, it's reasonably easy to control. It's not flowing as fast as it would be as if I was painting wet on wet. I'll show you what I mean by that. But here, your marks largely stay where you put them on the paper and I would say for most of the painting that I do, I'm painting wet onto dry. As this dries, you can then paint over the top of it again once it's dry and you're still painting wet onto dry. But with wet onto wet, it's a totally different ball game. What you do is you wet the paper first. So this box in the bottom left hand corner, I'm going to make it nice and wet. Now, as I add the paint to it, you'll see that it behaves in a totally different fashion. Let's, let's just mix some nice cadmium red here. I would probably want this to dry up a little more if I was doing a painting because it'll run everywhere. But as you can see, when I, when I make the mark, totally different to wet onto dry. It's a little bit uncontrollable. That gets quite a lot of fun, but you can get some lovely effects doing this. And certainly when I introduce another colour, it's a really good way of doing a variegated wash and allowing it to sort of happen on the paper and allowing the paper and the water to do the work. You see that's, that's running together. That blue that's gone in is creating purple where it runs into the red. As I drop the paint in, you get these interesting edges as the paint bleeds into the water and depending on how wet the paper is depending on how concentrated the paint is that you're putting into it you can get some fantastic effects i use this a lot for skies it's a great way to paint in an, in the early stages of a painting where you're laying down colors and trying to set out the atmosphere and the warm colors and the cool colors within a painting but that's largely the two main ways of putting paint down on paper. Wet onto dry, wet onto wet. If you want to progress with your watercolours, practice these exercises. Try painting those three different types of washes. Do them as many times as you like. You can almost never get too good at that, that particular technique and then play around with wet onto dry and wet onto wet and just have a look at the way the paint moves around, how it behaves. And the more you do that, the better you will get because you become comfortable with the medium that you're using. So have a go and I'll see you next time.